Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode, and I've got a fantastic guest for you today, Neil McSpadden, and he's from the Tax Sherpa. You can see what all he does: basically maximize savings, uh, save on your taxes. Uh, you know, we'll talk about utility of taxes, um, but uh, taxes are your biggest expense. But he saves solopreneurs and small business owners tens of thousands of dollars on their taxes, all without earning any more or spending any less. So really interesting. Um, and so uh, I'm really happy to welcome uh, Neil to the show. Very timely appearance. Yeah. Yeah. Good to be here. Uh, we got a couple days before the big 415. <laughs> but uh you know yeah. the the thing about the thing about the the 15th is that it's only a deadline if you owe money so uh if you are you know a, a w2 employee like you know a, a physician or a, an engineer or something of that sort most of the time you're probably going to get a refund unless you were doing something super aggressive <laughs> um, which i'm not opposed to but uh yeah so it's it's only a deadline if you are if you are owing money then you got a final extension you got to put in a payment if you know if you have one. Otherwise, they'll start charging interest. But uh, but everybody else, everybody's getting a refund and everything. They're, you know, the IRS, if if they owe you money, you will never hear from them. But uh, <laughs> if you owe them money or they think you owe them money, then you'll start to get letters and things like that. Yeah. So uh, definitely want to keep up to, to up to date on that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's uh. Yeah. Like I said. Um, if, it, if you get a refund, basically you gave the federal government a zero percent interest loan, that and um, but it's you know it's always it's always nice to get that refund. But you know if you have to shell out money, it's like oh man. But it's actually a good thing because you can you can use that money to work for you during the year. So uh, yeah, yeah. clients uh, who <laughs> have to make that decision throughout the year. It's like, well, do I want to put in estimated payments or do I want to keep that money and do something with it? You know, I tell them so if you don't, they'll charge you extra, and it's yes. you know so there's an underpayment penalty, which is you know three percent ish usually, yeah. uh, of whatever the tax is. So ninety something percent of the people I I go through that with, they'll say I'll I'll just keep the money and pay more, pay a little bit more later because I can make better use of that money in my own portfolio than they can uh, with just uh, covering that that penalty basically. Yeah. So here's the one question I have is um. You know, as a solopreneur or entrepreneur, and um, you know, you've got your quarterly estimated taxes. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, especially with four fifteen, right? You, you've got, you've got um, the year prior that tax return if mm -hmm. you owe money, and then plus you have that first quarter of the, the current year. So it's almost yep. like you get double taxed. So yep. my question for you is, I was thinking about this. I was like, well, what what happens if like it's because these quarterly estimated taxes, as long as by the end of the year you pay you know kind of you know appro approximately what happens if you um skip 415 like that q1 or mm -hmm. you just pay a little bit less but then you make up for it in like in the uh, set for the um was it the july or actually mm -hmm. july or the the next one the q2 yeah. one yeah um, it's it's uneven so it's 415 615 915 then 115 so yeah, so if you, if you ask the IRS that question, they'll they'll tell you, well, you should have made your fourth quarter payment back in January, and you wouldn't have that issue. Uh -huh. uh, so, but you know, a lot of times, like if you if you're in like uh, a syndication or you're in, you have some other income that you don't know what it is yet, and uh, you, you know that's not realistic. So um, the the real life answer is that, well, two two things. So one is that if you have uneven income. Yeah. Um, then there is, this is on the form 2210, which is the underpayment calculation worksheet. Um, if you have uneven income throughout the year, then you can actually put in the, in the worksheet that, you know, those, that unevenness. And so if, if it works out such that Q1 would have been a lower quarter anyway, you can go ahead and pay less and they won't wow. bother you about it. Also in the, in the real world kind of scenarios that, you know, if you make it up in Q2, Q3, Q4, so that you wouldn't have uh, a balance due, you know, in the following year, yeah. then, you know, they'll, they'll charge you a little bit just for that first quarter missed payment. Uh -huh. But, you know, it's it's almost a negligible amount at that point. So, yes. um, so yeah, there, there are there are definitely cash flow management strategies you can apply. It's like, well, you know, how much do I want to allocate to the different things, um, you know, versus, you know, Q2, Q3, Q4, or just pay it all at the end or what have you. It kind of depends on how yeah. aggressive you want to be as far as, you know, your investments. 
and uh, how much you know you just don't want to pay them. <laughs> so when I talk to some people, it's like, well, I'm not going to pay them a dime sooner than I have to. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and that's just a philosophical stance that I have. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> if if you're one of those, then yeah, wait till wait till the next uh, April, and you'll pay a little bit more, and that's just how it is. But you'll have your money. So yeah. So yeah. So so it's not the end of the world if you miss a quarter. But, um, you know, again, if you ask the IRS, they'll, they'll want you to pay, you know, as much as you can, as soon as you can and oh, give you those interest-free loans. Yeah. So they, so basically they can go fund wars and, you know, yeah. kill innocent civilians and, you know, bail out the rich people. So, so <laughs> over, over the past couple of years, I've been coming to this conclusion that, uh, taxes as a whole are unnecessary. So, uh, you know, we're running $2 trillion deficits or $3 trillion deficits now. And, yeah. you know, the CBO just came out with a report uh, saying that basically they do 10 year projections and basically the, the deficits from uh, under current, uh, you know, budget projections are going to be at least one point six trillion dollars from here on out. It's not that long ago that the whole federal budget was one point six trillion dollars. So yeah. we could just fund that budget with just inflation and uh, or, you know, net borrowing, you know, whatever they want to call it. And yeah. uh you know, we wouldn't have to, I'd be out of a job, but we wouldn't have to file taxes at all. It's quite interesting. Um, yeah, there's a, you know, like I said, um, so, you know, one question I have for you is um, this, uh, your, um, you know, we can't really fight the taxes because that's the law. But um, mm -hmm. one, one thing it's talking about is, um, uh, you know, four tactics, to, this is interesting, four taxes to save you 18000 on your taxes. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, we've kind of come up with over the years, this, uh, tried and true kind of approach, uh, especially yeah. for solopreneurs, uh, business owners, independent contractors. Uh, it also works for, uh, if you're a W2 person, but you don't have as much flexibility because uh, when you have a W2, you know, they get you up front, you know, they, they pull out taxes on, <laughs> on the front end. So there's, there's less to do, uh, there, but it's, things can be done. Um, so basically, you know, money comes in, uh, that's going to be your revenue and money's going to go out. That's going to be your expenses or after those two things happen, uh, then there's a multitude of choices to make. Uh, so a lot of this revolves around entity structuring. There's, uh, you know, over 23 million businesses in the U S that are structured in my opinion, in the wrong way, um, as far as tax optimization. And then there's also, um, there's also additional strategies. There's uh, there's meeting strategies, there's reimbursement strategies there, you know, if you have kids of the right age and, and a couple of other qualifications, put them on payroll. Um, there's, you know, compensating yourself, uh, optimizations to be done there, you know, retirement planning, all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have, uh, a, a, a kind of set of four, four of those things that work for just about every business. And so that's going to be, uh, 92% of the time. S corp is going to, you're, you're going to want an S corp in your mix somewhere. You uh -huh. can have partnerships that feed into your S corp. So like if you're doing joint ventures with other people, you see that a lot. Uh -huh. Um, or if you have, uh, if you want to separate assets into different LLCs for liability purposes, that's all fine, but it's all going to flow into an S corp as kind of like your home base. Uh, and as, like I said, 92% of the time, that's going to be the way to go. Um, meetings strategies, as far as having, uh, business management meetings for yourself, and uh taking uh, uh meeting rental expenses for that um if you do it under specific guidelines then you, it's uh basically tax-free income uh reimbursements for yourself uh from your business for the business use of your stuff you know uh cars and travel and you know that sort of thing um and then optimizing your own compensation at at that level is uh those four things together you know 18,000 is actually a low ball number. Uh, I always do that in a conservative kind of way because <laughs> yeah. uh, where, where that number comes from is like if, if you earned 100K and you, and you implemented these four things and you did it in a, you know, reasonable thing and, and uh, you know, you're married filing joint, you got two kids, that's already putting you in, a, in an advantageous position. But even with all that, uh, you know, your uh, it comes out to 18, uh, 179. I think it's the number. But oftentimes, you know, um, you know, we'll save clients, you know, you know, uh, we did one the other day, it was 32,000, uh, another one last week, it was 28,000, uh, but with the same strategies, but you know, everybody's numbers are going to be different depending on what your numbers and what your situation is. Yeah. Yeah. The other question, like I said, uh, so here's another thing I talk, you know, what about like, 
solopreneurs let's say they make mm-hmm. like um you know just like they make you know they make enough like six figures let's say they 200 like mm-hmm. what's the income level at which you should start considering s corp because like um you know a lot of doctors they're locum so they mm-hmm. uh so they get 1099 and they yep. make six seven hundred k of course you want to s corp but what is the kind of the income threshold at which you say I don't want to file S core, I, but I have a business and I can, you know, deduct my expenses kind of like as a, what's it called? It's called the, um, I don't know what it's called, but it's just kind of a so self-employment. I think that's mm-hmm. what it's called. Yep. They, like, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. So if you talk to 10 different accountants, you'll get 10 different answers to this question. <laughs> uh, and I, mm-hmm. I've heard a, a huge range of when I, when I've talked to clients as far as, you know, what, what other people have said. So in my opinion, you know, because what what happens is, you know, if you're if you're doing an S corp, it it does increase the complexity. You're gonna have to file an additional return. Yeah. Uh, you're gonna have to, you know, you probably have an entity anyway, so that pro- that part will probably be the same. Uh, but you know, it's it's more work, it's more overhead, and all that kind of stuff. But uh, in terms of like, where is the break even? For me, it's low. Uh, you know, 30, 40 grand, and it's it's worth doing. And and so there's there's two components to that though. So one is that. Uh, you know, you'll just come out better on the tax side and we are, you know, what we do, we're always looking to optimize on the tax side, audit risk. So, uh, I don't know if you've heard the, the chatter out of Congress and the white house, uh, they are looking to audit a lot more and (laughs) the IRS puts out a publication every few years called the tax gap report. Uh And the, and the gap is, uh, they say, we think Americans should have paid us, you know, this much. And we actually collected this much, which is a smaller number. And the difference is the gap. And yeah. they break down the uh, the different sectors that the gap occurs in, and the single largest uh, category, uh, which accounts for a third of the gap, is on uh, 1040 Schedule C. So that's the profit or loss from business of uh, an uh, either an unincorporated entity, like a like you're getting a 1099 to your personal name, or if you have an LLC but it's disregarded, it still files a Schedule C. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know all the all the headlines over the last year or two have all been like you know if you're making over four hundred thousand dollars a year we're going to make sure you pay your fair share all that kind of stuff so you know the the locums doctor making 600k that's you (laughs) they're they're looking for you um so you know the 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 other advantage to shifting it to an s corporation is getting it off your tax return and it it's going to reduce your risk of audit by about a factor of 10. it's uh it's hugely beneficial, even if there's no tax savings. That's still a benefit of just yeah. reducing your risk of audit. The other question I get it a lot is um because I know a lot of um people they they stress about the four fifteen deadline, but then a lot of um especially high net worth and then uh, you know a lot of the um you know the multi the hundred millionaires and the uh, you know the billionaires they they do this strategy where they file an extension and then they file in October. Mm-hmm. And then they said your risk of audit in October is a lot less because yeah. it's like, uh, so what is, what is your thought about using that as a tax strategy? That's true. Um, so what happens is each year the IRS picks a pet topic um, and we don't know what it is until like two or three years later. But uh, one year, a few years ago, they were looking at uh, charitable contributions. And so they come up with a quota. They say, we're going to examine 700,000 things, tax returns that have this on it. And, you know, as, as the tax returns get filed, you know, that quota gets filled up and once that quota is reached, they stop. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if you're doing something that you, you, uh, you think is more aggressive, or if you just don't want the hassle, then yeah, yeah you can, you can wait. Now the extensions, the, the, the thing you remember about extensions is that it extends your time to file paperwork. It does not extend your time to pay. Oh. So, uh, that's, that's where that, if you owe money, they want it by 415. Otherwise they're going to start charging you. Uh-huh. Um, so, uh, that's just something to keep in mind. But uh-huh. even if you're getting a refund, you might still want to wait just to, you know, if, if, you know, cash flow wise, that works for you. Uh, if, yeah. if you just want to reduce that, that potential uh-huh. problem. So like random getting your name picked out of a hat, uh, chance of audit is about a 0.5%. Yeah. So you can reduce that if you, the longer you wait, the more it's reduced basically. Yeah, it's quite interesting. So basically, you know, the billionaires, if they even owe a tax refund, they would, they would basically forego that, that the free loan to the government, Mm -hmm. just to avoid the audit. But, um, you know, I was just, I was just wondering, because, you know, every tax year, it's such a waste, like, it's just such a waste of resources. And, you know, it's like, 
you don't see much good coming out of it. It's just like, you know, it's like just so, so wasteful, you know, and mm -hmm. just, so I'm just, but, um, you know, again, it's, I'm, I'm sure there's the, you know, but, uh, here's another question I had for you mm -hmm. is, um, this, uh, idea where, um, this, you know, what are the biggest mistakes for business owners and, um, that they should avoid? Uh, it, well, I mean, that's a big question. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, f for, you know, the way I look at it, obviously taxes is going to be uh, either your largest expense or maybe your second largest expense, if maybe if you have a big labor component. Um, so, you know, not taking the time to actually fix that is, I think, going to be the largest, uh, largest issue. Because so, you know, we'll, we'll kind of across the board, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll look at somebody's situation. We'll do what we call a survey call. And we'll say, okay, you know, based on the numbers you're telling me, we think we can save you, you know, 20 grand, 30 grand, whatever it is. Yeah. And, you know, so that's, that's great and all, but yeah. the important thing to remember is that this is every year, right? So <laughs> if you're saving, and this is like cash in pocket, right? So if you're saving 30 grand a year, it's like, well, if I then turn around and invest that, whether, you know, it could be invest in anything, you know, real estate or stocks or crypto, whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, what, what is the opportunity cost of not doing that over your working lifetime? Yeah. And, you know, if we're talking 30 grand a year, it is enormous. So exactly. whatever business that you're in, you know, at some point you're going to retire, right? You need to build a portfolio. You need to, uh, invest for the future. Uh, cause social security, assuming that it's there is not going to cover much. It doesn't cover much now. And it's, it's scheduled to run out of money here in, in a couple of years. Um, so, you know, you have to build that that asset base for yourself. And, you know, I, I have a lot of doctor clients and doctors are great at earning money and they are terrible at keeping it. So yeah. Oh yeah. I've got one guy that I'm thinking of in particular, he buys a new $120,000 car every year oh, and, wow. um, you know, I, it looks great, but you know, what do you get, what are you putting aside? So, you know, that's, that's an issue that, you know, if you go back to, um, a millionaire next door, you know, Thomas Stanley was talking about that. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it, that, that money that you're giving up to the government by, by not paying attention is it just a, a lifetime of opportunity cost that you're missing out on that, you know, is going to be like seven, eight figures, you know, come retirement age. So to me, that's, that's the biggest mistake, uh, people make. And, and it's really just a matter of taking the time. It's like, we get so busy doing the thing that we're doing, uh, that we, we don't take the time to operate at the management level. And uh, part of our tax strategy with, with our monthly meetings is to actually set aside a day and go over your books and review your business and then just, you know, improve on what's working and decrease what's not working. And then, you know, that spread over time will increase or improve your, your business and give you the time to step back and really make those strategic level decisions. So uh, it's just, it's just critical to actually do that level of work. Yeah. I love that. Um, so yeah, it, like I said, uh, you know, tax planning, tax strategy, these are kind of, um, you know, if you, owe, if, I guess if you owe taxes, that's, um, you know, that's a quality problem. But, you know, of course, if you're like in the, you know, the tens, the hundreds, you know, hundreds of thousands, you know, the millions of, you know, that's a big number. So, yeah. um, and you don't really see much come out of that. So, um how can people contact you and reach out to you, check out your business, et cetera? Yeah. Best thing to do is go to taxsherpa.com and uh, you'll see a link at the top, book an appointment. And that'll, that'll get you on our calendar with uh, one of our staff, one of our tax experts. And we, we have a four, a four part approach. So we have uh, the survey, the route, the trek, and the compass check. So survey is when we sit down with you, we kind of go over your situation and say, okay, what's your, what's your, uh, family situation, you know, what's your income, what's your expenses, what do you have currently as far as entities and all that kind of stuff. So that's just establishing where you are. The route is figuring out where we can go. It's it's the map, you know, how do we get from here to there? What strategies do we need to implement? Do we need to create new entities? Do we need to put the kids on payroll? Do we uh, want to set up a charitable foundation? And then the uh, the trek is actually getting there. <laughs> so that's, that's doing the work. Uh, yeah. you know, implementing all these things and then like everything else in life, things change, right? So our compass check is our updates, you know, that we sit down usually quarterly, uh, sometimes twice a year, just kind of depends on, on the situation. 
and we, we we review and we say, okay, you know, what's going on? Are we online with our projections? Is revenue up? Is revenue down? You know, and then just making those tweaks along the way so that by the time, you know, tax season comes around the next year that we are in a good position that, you know, good or bad is relative, you know, <laughs> as far as, you know, if you're, if you're paying a hundred million in taxes, it probably feels bad, but you know, at least you'll, you'll have a defined thing and you'll meet your expectations. That's, that's really yeah. what, what we are going for is to, to, to map out the road ahead and then actually end up where we think we're going to end up. Now, obviously even, uh, I have a call later today with, uh, with client, even with all the projections that we do throughout the year, we still overpaid by $18,000. So he's getting a refund. Not terrible. Um, yeah. but, uh, no matter how good our projections are, they're never going to be perfect, right? Because things are going to change last minute. It's like, oh, Christmas was bigger than we thought it was going to be, uh, or it was less than we thought it was going to be. So that's going to change our year-end numbers. So you know, it, it's always going to be something like that. But but we're in we're in the, the a pretty tight band as far as what our expectation is. Yeah. So uh, so yeah, but taxherbal.com is the best way. Uh, we've got a blog. We've got um, you can go to my YouTube and and check out uh, usually weekly calls that we do. <laughs> <laughs> so at the last two weeks, uh, I've been ill, but, uh, usually every Tuesday we do, uh, like a Q and a kind of thing of just answering questions that have come in from clients over the last little while. And, uh, we stream that on YouTube and LinkedIn and, and Facebook, I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the best way. And, um, you know, everything, the, the, the difficulty with the tax world is that everything depends. It's, it all depends on your situation, what you have going on. What's true for you is not necessarily gonna be true for your neighbor. So, yes. uh, we have to examine what's, what's going on in your particular situation and then what applies to you. Yeah. It's almost like a, being a doctor, like you have different, you have very common conditions, but every patient is different and, you know, yeah. and genetics and all yeah. of that. So, uh, or, or, or somebody, uh, calling, I found this white pill in my cabinet. What is it? <laughs> That's every pill that doesn't help. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, excellent. And for, like I said, uh, for all the audience, be sure to give Neil a like and follow on his socials. Check out his website, his services. Obviously, not this year, but following. And um, and with that, thanks so much for coming onto the podcast. And you know, the time to plan is always now. Yeah, so exactly. It's uh, it's never too early to get started on on setting up for for the following year. All right. Well, excellent, yeah. excellent. Um. All right. Well, the, um, like I said, I have a fast turnaround. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, your episode will release. Uh, in the next few days and right. um i've given you a five-star review already i think but if not i will and i've um i'm really growing on uh youtube and um linkedin instagram and twitter so we'd love to yeah. connect with you there but um yeah absolutely yeah excellent and um any questions or anything or anything or um no i mean this is fun i think yeah I yeah flowed pretty pretty easily yeah I'm going to uh, actually. I'm just filling out this uh, five star review now. Yeah, I I am new to Podmatch. You're actually my first podcast <laughs> match, so yeah, I'm not quite sure what to uh, what to do here. I guess I click confirm. Yeah, yeah, confirm. Uh, and if, I think I followed you on all your stuff, but let me just double check. Okay, let me see Podmatch. It's gonna. I just followed you on LinkedIn, and I'm gonna follow you on Instagram. Follow. And then uh, Facebook. Okay. All right. Okay. So I did my five stars there. So that yeah. should be. Yeah. And uh, I was uh, I was actually on your YouTube channel earlier this morning. Uh, oh, okay. Excellent. Do all the follows and the thumbs ups and. Yeah. <laughs> all the things. Oh, you got one point one nine k subs. That's good. It's uh. Yeah, I've been on YouTube a long time. So uh, if you go oh. back in the archives, there's all kinds of random stuff. But yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it's it's half tech stuff now. Well, excellent. Excellent. All right. Well, uh, thanks so much. And uh, thanks for connecting. Yeah, absolutely. And, All right. Uh, we'll see you on the streams. See you. All right. Have a good one.